Hey guys, I'm Jim. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. This is episode number eight of my Luminar AI tutorial series. We've covered a lot of ground. I'm still on the editing module and working on today the portrait tab. We're going to talk about portraits, portrait editing, and show off some of the tools here. So let's just jump into that so as not to waste anybody's time because you got things to do. Here we go. Here's a portrait. I did not take this. This is a download from Unsplash. I will put a link to the artist down below. Portrait tab is super powerful, has some amazing tools, and I'm not even a portrait person, really. I can appreciate a nicely done portrait, but it's not something I take that much of. I've taken some, but I will admit that these tools are so fun that it makes me want to take portraits. So anyway, face AI is the first piece. And you can see you've got three different sections here, the face, the eyes, and the mouth. As in the previous videos, I'm not going to cover all of these in depth. I'm just going to show off some of the tools. I highly recommend experimenting and seeing what works best for you. And every portrait, of course, is different. So face light, fantastic for lifting those shadows in partially obscured areas of the photo. You know, just be careful. Again, make it natural as, as you can. Slim face, as you can see, kind of compresses. To be clear, I'm not going to imply that this person needs any of the edits that I'm making. I'm just showing you how the tools work. Um, iris, you can actually automatically change the color of the eyes. I really like clicking and making them blue. It's just kind of fun. Again, not real here, but you have the ability. So the nice thing about this is if they already have blue eyes, for example, you can add this to make them more blue. You can also do some interesting things like owl eyes. That's kind of strange. And cat eyes. There we go. Could be fun for creative, spooky, maybe a Halloween kind of uh, conceptual portrait. But if you have the blue eyes, let's say, for example, you put those in, you can add an iris flare. You can see in the bottom of the eyes, it's picking up a little bit of flare there. You can enlarge eyes, and the intent here is not to make a cartoonish portrait by enlarging eyes, but what it does do is if somebody's slightly squinting or something, it can help open those up to make a better looking portrait. Eye whitening works great, and you can see the cool thing about this tool is it's picking up both eyes. The one eye on the right-hand side of the photo is a partially obscured by her hair, but yet the blue eye went in just fine, and the eye whitening is picking up there a little bit as well. Eye enhancer gives you a little bit of crispness, what I consider clarity in the image, red eye removal, dark circle removal, things like that, and then of course in the mouth, you can adjust the saturation, redness, things like that, and teeth whitening is there as well. So again, that looks terrible. That's a completely fake edit, but I wanted to show you how the face AI tools work. It's really powerful. There's a lot you can do, and I recommend, as I said before, every photo is different. Experiment a little bit. See what works best for your photo. Skin AI is the next one, and this one basically allows you to do a little bit of skin smoothing. So as you drag this to the right, you can see that it's really softening up her skin overall. There's the before, and there's the after. There's also a little bit of shine on her face, and you can drag the slider here to the right to remove that. I think that's great because even in a well shot where you're managing the light well, even in a well shot photo, you sometimes will get a little bit of shine. It does a great job of taking that out. And skin defects removal, there's really nothing visible there, but if you click that, it will remove those from your portrait. The other thing about skin defects is if it doesn't remove the things that you want to remove, you can always go back to the Essentials tab, get the Eraser tool, and do it that way. Now here's a different photo also from Unsplash. Again, I'll put the artist link down below. But Body AI is the next one. And this one basically gives you the ability to compress or expand the shape of the body. So as you can see, you just drag the shape slider. If you want to slim them up a little bit, you can do that. Or if you want to go the other way, you can go like that abdomen actually pulls in where your stomach is in a photo. I could use that on self-portraits. In the case of someone like this, clearly doesn't need either one of these sliders. Again, just a demo. But the nice thing I find is that because it pulls in that center area, if the shirt is a little bit baggy, it can help pull that in too. So you can kind of see how that's compressing that area. So that's pretty cool and very functional and uh, can certainly come in handy on particular portraits. And last one is high key. Now high key, you see this in a lot of fashion photos where they're creating a high contrast sort of image. Let me just show you, it's kind of desaturated. It's very high contrast. The blacks and the dark parts are getting kind of dark. The, the brighter parts are getting brighter. And you've got standard high key where you can just adjust there and then dynamic. And I recommend just experimenting. You can also move the blacks around, brighten or darken them. You can see how you can have a very 
kind of an urban, almost gritty portrait real quick, despite starting with something that was fairly saturated. So there you go. I quickly made that a little bit grittier, higher contrast, a little bit washed out in terms of the whites and deep and rich in the blacks. And then in advanced settings, you have the ability to add some glow if you're trying to create a little bit more kind of what I would consider moody, uh, more contrast, saturation, things like that. But you can see just this tool alone took me from that to that. Now you may not like it, that's fine. It's just an example of what you can do. But high key is very powerful and in combination, you have all these powerful tools. And don't forget, in addition to the portrait tab, it's very possible that you might want to go back to essentials and do some things around highlights and shadows and contrast, details, structure, things like that. I definitely, in editing a portrait, would use the portrait tools in combination with various sliders that are on the Essentials tab. So that's it, my friend. Kind of short. There's four powerful sliders, very useful on portraits, but I wanted to give you an overview of how they work. Every portrait is different. Every person is different. Edit or season to taste, as I like to say, and just have fun with it. There's a lot of creative things you can do. I hope it gives you some ideas about what you can do with these tools and how they work. And thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back really soon with the next video, which is going to be diving into the professional tab. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and adios.